spring. A welcome sight for a young crow that has battled and made it through its first winter. The young crow and his parents are on a bog in their territory in search of food, and at this time of year, in May, a particular prey is in abundance. Amphibians. Each spring, frogs group up into the shallow waters of this bog to mate and to lay their eggs, and this particular crow family is quite aware of that. They take advantage of the short-lived abundance of food while they can. Pretty rough for the frog, but a delicious meal for the young crow. And for his first time hunting frogs, he's done pretty well. And today seems to be a good day. Just a short time after going off to cache his previous frog, he returned to the bog and got yet another one. Crows are opportunistic eaters, so they eat pretty much anything that is available such as fish, like with this guy that has caught himself one and is now trying to keep the seagull from getting it. Corn is another food that they like, as you can see with this large group that are foraging together on a farm, a common sight at this time of year. They won't pass up a chance to indulge on some fruit, such as these berries, and these apples. Well, this young crow just seems to be picking them for fun. They also eat carrion. You can't see the carcass because it's buried in the snow, but here is one of the crows with a nice big chunk of meat. A welcome meal, I'm sure, in the dead of winter. These corvids can be characters to watch. Here is a cat in an apple tree, and there's a crow that seems to be deliberately picking on the cat for fun. Doesn't appear to be any real reason for the crow to waste its time on this cat. It doesn't have a nest around here. There's no new fledged offspring to protect. He just seems to be picking on this old tom and he seems to be aware of the upper hand that he has too. Whenever the cat makes a move toward, the crow flies up above, back and forth, and then perches on the tree again. He even aggressively picked the apple blossoms off the branch as if to make a point. Who knows what the reason was for the crow to pick on the cat. That's a matter between the crow and the kitty. Crows pick on other animals as well, like their look-alike but larger cousin, the raven. You can pretty well bet that if there is a lone raven and crows around that the crows will be chasing it. Diving at the raven as he flew by, I couldn't help but to feel bad for him. He's just flying by. What's up with those crows anyway? They don't mind taking on birds much larger than the raven either, even if that means doing it all by themselves. They even pick on each other too. It seems to be that they just like playing around. Like with many other blackbirds, crows have iridescent colors. Depending on the angle that you are viewing one, some other colors can pop out, like greens, purples, and blues. Being social animals, they hold strong family bonds. There can be up to as many as 15 members in a family. Offspring from previous years may stick around for a while before heading off to make a family of their own. So even crow parents have children that stick around for a while. Crows can be affectionate toward each other as well. Preening one another like this most likely strengthens their bond. Don't think that these guys don't have feelings. It's known that crows display emotions such as happiness, anger, and sadness. They are one heck of a parent, too. Here is one parent crow with its two newly fledged offspring. It has brought them to a food source, someone's garden. The parent crow isn't eating anything and is instead keeping a watch on its two youngsters as they rummage around in search of something to eat. Every once in a while, the adult crow gives a call. Could be warning them to be attentive or to get ready to go. They are vulnerable this new out of the nest. Still a lot to learn. As their fledglings get older, the food handouts become less and less. This can be hard for the youngsters as they bag and bag with no one answering, but this is crucial part of their learning to depend on themselves. The parent crow will just ignore him, and if he gets too overbearing, a little peck should put him in his place. Well, maybe not. 
If a young crow is lucky enough to have an older sibling, they get extra handouts of food, like with this newly fledged crow with its older sibling who was born last year. And the older one seems fine enough with sharing his food. Well, actually, it seems like he has no other choice but to share. Although the food handouts become less and less as the youngsters grow, the parents do still feed them during the winter months. Youngsters will stay on the territory with their parents for at least two years, which is when they become sexually mature. Crow youngsters are quite curious about most everything in their habitat. This is common in all young corvids, a kind of learning development, getting familiar with the stuff in their environment, what's edible and what's not. They will even play around with objects like wood, bringing it somewhere else and hiding it like they would with food. As the days pass away from newly fledged to almost juvenile, they start learning another essential thing, the crow language. During this time, they are very vocal, making all kinds of different calls and sounds, and this learning isn't just a few months, it goes straight through to the next year. They learn other bird species alarm calls and are attentive to the calls of other crows, especially their parents. Here are some of the calls and sounds that they make, but it isn't all of them, not even close. The downside with a young crow getting older is that they start to get picked on by their family members. As spring approaches, different family groups of crows group up together. A large group like this is known as a murder. They fly around and around all over the area while making all kinds of sounds and calls. It's like a big family reunion and it can go on for hours. This is probably a good time for sexually mature crows to meet other potential mates as well. Crows are known to be highly intelligent. They are capable of thinking ahead and planning, like for instance hiding food elsewhere if they suspect another crow watching. And remembering bad faces, people that have done them wrong. But they also remember the good faces, such as people that give them treats. <laughs> 